All right, today's lesson is the 3B3 notes, and we're going to be talking about angle-pair relationships. So angle-pair relationships, well, first of all, the fact that we're dealing with angles, but pair meaning two angles, so the relationship between two angles. We've talked about angle-pair relationships in the past. We've talked about supplementary angles, complementary angles, uh, vertical angles, all these different types of relationships, but now we're going to talk about what can we say about these uh, angles that share these relationships. Now, if I were in class today, what this would look like is you guys work on this proof, we go over the answers and write down um, the theorem. Go to the next proof, do the same thing. You guys work on your own, have someone present it, we go over the answers. So I'm hoping what we can do through this video is achieve this uh, similar thing. I want you to work on your own through the proof because that's what it would look like in class. I wouldn't give you anything, you work on your own, I come around and check it, talk with you guys, and then we go over it together. So what I want you to do is do it on your own, and then instead of me being able to come and check it or us going over as a class, you get to watch the video and see my thought process as I go through this proof. All right, so for the first one, um, go ahead and pause the video right now. Try this one on your own. Now that you've done it on your own, this is how I would do it. I start with the given, as always. So angle one and angle two are right angles, I'm going to abbreviate angles or with a symbol, and that is the given. And what I want to conclude is that angle one is congruent to angle two. So in my thought process, I'm saying, well, if they're right angles, I know that right angles have a measure of 90 degrees, and if they're both measure 90 degrees, then they must be equal to each other. And if they're equal to each other, then the angles must be congruent. So that's kind of my thought process as I'm going through this, but now I need to say that in uh, statements and reasons. Well, all I'm given is that they're right angles. So if I look at my proof sheet, Going back to here, I can see that if I have a right angle, then segments are, or lines are perpendicular. Well, I don't want to go to perpendicular, so what else do we have about right angles? Okay, up here, if right angles, then 90 degrees. So I know that the angle measure would be 90 degrees. So I can say that if right angle, then 90 degrees. And what that looks like for a statement is that the measure of angle one equals 90 degrees, and the measure of angle two equals 90 degrees. Well, then I can say if they both equal 90 degrees, they must be equal to each other. So the measure of angle one must equal measure of angle two. Now there's two ways um, or two reasons for this. You could say that I'm replacing this 90 degrees with measure of angle two in there, in which case you would say the substitution property of equality. Or you could say that this is really the transitive. If measure of angle one equals 90 degrees, measure of angle two equals 90 degrees, and measure of angle one equals measure of angle two. Using the fact that these two measures are connected by that 90 degrees. So I would actually accept transitive property of equality as well. It's sometimes difficult for students to understand when can I use transitive and when can I use substitution and when can I use both. So there is a worksheet online, like I said earlier, that helps you practice that. All right, that was step three, actually. Well, now I can jump right to the conclusion. If measure of angle one equals measure of angle two, then those uh, angles must be congruent. And the reason here is that if angles are equal in measure, then the angles are congruent. And we have proven this. So this is actually a theorem you've proven. This is called the right angles congruence theorem. And what it says is, if I know that two angles are right angles, then those angles must be congruent. So now in a proof, we're going to be able to say, as soon as I tell you that two angles are right angles, you can jump right away to the fact that they're congruent. So this is going to save us time. So right angles congruence theorem says, if two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. Now if you take out your proof sheet, we can write this in a, a little bit faster of a way. So right under here, this is section 2.7 in your textbook. This is if right angles, then angles congruent. And this is a theorem. And remember, a theorem is something that you can be proven. So you guys proved it. Okay? So this is a theorem. All right, from now on, if, we, um, if there's any kind of right angles that are given in a problem, we can automatically say they're congruent. We can skip those two steps in the middle. Um, so keep that in mind as we move further on through our proofs. 
All right, next one. You're given that A and B are supplements, and C and B are supplements, and you want to prove that angle A and C must be congruent. So when we look at this, what we're saying is, if these two are supplementary, and these two are supplementary, then this guy must be congruent to that guy, because they both are supplementary to the same angle. But we have to be able to prove that. So a lot of us will say, well, yeah, that makes sense. And it often makes sense if we have angle measures here. So like, if I was saying, well, that's an... Let me see, I do have a pencil I can write that in so I can erase it. Oh, I don't have a pencil handy, but if I said this was 20 degrees, that would make this 160 degrees. And if that's 160 degrees and supplementary here, that must be 20 degrees. So these are both 20 degrees, then obviously they're congruent. Problem is we don't um, want to prove it true just if this is 20 degrees and 160 degrees. We want to prove it true for all supplementary angles. So go ahead right now, try and think through this proof on your own. Uh, pause the video, and when you're finished with your own proof, then look and see how I did this proof. All right, so for me, we write down the given. Angle A and angle B are supplements. And angle C and angle B are supplements, and that's given. Well, if all I'm given is that they're supplementary, then the only thing I can use from there is the definition of supplementary angles, and we talked about this earlier in the unit. So if two angles are supplementary, what that means is that the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. So if two angles are supplementary, then the sum of the angle measures is 180 degrees. And that's on our proof sheet. It's the definition of supplementary angles. So what that looks like in our statements is that measure of angle A plus measure of angle B is equal to 180 degrees. And measure of angle C plus measure of angle B is equal to 180 degrees. Well, now that they're both equal to 180 degrees, I can set them equal to each other. So I could say measure of angle A plus measure of angle B will equal measure of angle C plus measure of angle B. And I can say that because of either the substitution property of equality, because I am substituting uh, C plus B and for that 180, or I could also say that that is the transitive property of equality. So this is another example where either one would work because I have this expression, that expression, so these two would be connected by the 180 degrees. So either one of them would actually work for this problem. Well, now I'm really close. I see a measure of angle B is on both sides, so if I subtract that from both sides or add the opposite of measure of angle B, I'd have measure of angle A is equal to measure of angle C. That would be my addition property of equality. And then I want to prove the angles are congruent. So the final step, step five, would be that angle A is congruent to angle C. And the reason that that is true is because if angles are equal in measure, then the angles are congruent. So what this says is, if you have two angles that are supplementary to the same angle, then these two angles must be congruent. So we started with the given, we proved that A and C must be congruent, because they're both supplementary to the same angle. And that is what the congruent supplements theorem says. So looking down here, if two angles are supplementary to the same, and I'm going to throw in something else. They could be congruent to this, or sorry, supplementary to the same, or congruent angles. Then the two angles are congruent. So in this picture, we'll talk about this example. If you look at this, angle one is supplementary to angle two, and angle three is supplementary to angle two. So then, using this theorem, what can you conclude? Go ahead and try and decide that right now. Therefore, what can we say? Well, what we can say 
is that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. Now the same is true for complementary angles. So if you flip to the back, we also have the congruent complements theorem, which says essentially the exact same thing, but for complementary angles. We have a little space to the right. I want to draw a picture here. We can say if two angles are complementary, complementary to the same or congruent angle, then the two angles are congruent. So let's look at this picture. I'm going to draw in these adjacent complementary angles right here, and another guy right here. So I'm going to label this A, B, and C, and I'm going to label this D and E. So this guy right here is the right angle, and this guy over here is the right angle. So let's talk about these two things. I'm saying that this angle is a right angle, and this angle is a right angle. So we got two right angles. So when you look at this, angle A, B, D, and angle D, B, C are complementary. Angle D, B, C and angle C, B, E are complementary. Therefore, what can you conclude based on this theorem? Go ahead and try and figure this out right now on your own. So what we can conclude then is that angle ABD must be congruent to angle CBE. Now let's go ahead and grab out our proof sheet again and let's see what this looks like on our proof sheet. So if you take out your proof sheet, This still is section 2.7 in your textbook. This one is a little bit of a long one, so you want to try and write maybe a little bit smaller. So if angles are supplementary to the same angle or congruent angles, then angles are congruent. And this is a theorem that you just proved. We can prove the same thing as essentially the same thing for complementary angles. So if angles complementary to the same angle or congruent angles, then angles are congruent. And again, this is another theorem that you proved. So when we're doing proofs, we can use these in the proofs. And these are actually very uh, often forgotten, so you're going to want to make sure you don't forget these because you can uh, save a lot, a lot of steps by remembering that we have theorems that say this. Okay, so back at it over here. We have a linear pair postulate. Um, we're not going to prove this because it's not a theorem. It's just a postulate, but it's going to be helpful as we move on through these problems. So I want to talk about what we can conclude about linear pairs. So if two angles form a linear pair, then what do you think we can conclude about them? Well, go ahead and draw a picture right now of a linear pair. Here's a linear pair. 
angles one and two. What can we conclude about angles one and two? Well, what we know about linear pairs is we know that angles one and two are adjacent. We also know that they are supplementary. So this is actually a postulate. So then they are supplementary. What that looks like here is that angle one and angle two form a linear pair. Therefore, angle one and angle two are supplementary. So again, we'll take out our proof sheet. This is a postulate. We're not going to prove this. We accept this without proof. It is still in section 2.7. So if linear pair, then angles are supplementary. And again, a postulate we're not going to prove. We just accept without proof. However, it will be useful in our next proof. Actually, the next couple proofs, maybe. All right. So we're given that angle one and angle three are vertical angles. I'm writing this in the given, but you don't really even need to have this given to you because in the picture it shows that they're given. So you really don't need that. Um, it also says that angle one and two are a linear pair. That's given in the picture. You don't have to explicitly say that. And angle two and three are a linear pair. That's also given. But I'm explicitly writing that so we can understand that these are the things that are going to be important for proving angle one and three congruent. Um, so one and three are vertical angles. We want to prove that if two angles are vertical angles, they must be congruent. This is something we've talked about in class already that a lot of you guys already know and use. Um, however, we need to prove this because it is a theorem. And in order to use this theorem in class, we need to prove it. So go ahead. Um, on your own right now, try and reason through this proof. And then um, once you're finished with that, start the video again, and I'll explain how I did the proof. All right, so looking up there, here we have the given. So angle one and angle three are vertical angles. Angle one and angle two form a linear pair. And angle two and angle three form a linear pair. Okay, so that's just the given. Not too exciting. We're used to seeing that. All right. Step two, I could say that if two angles form a linear pair, then they're supplementary. And from there, if they're supplementary, the sum is equal to 180 degrees. Set them equal and go from there. However, this theorem above, or sorry, on the other page, will make this a lot easier for us, the congruent supplements theorem. So let's take a look and see what this looks like. We know that if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. We just uh, talked about that postulate here. So if linear pair, then angles are supplementary. So what we can say is angle one and angle two are supplementary. We have to literally say this. Don't tell me that angle one plus angle two equals 180 degrees. Because that'd be using the definition of supplementary angles and all we're told is that they're supplementary. Now, if I use a the theorem on the front that says if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then these two angles are congruent, this proof becomes super easier. Not easy, but easier. So angle one and angle three. Oh, I don't want to say it like that. So angle one is congruent to angle three. And that's because if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then the angles are congruent. And there you go. So what this says is basically we start with vertical angles and we prove that those angles are congruent. That's what the vertical angles congruence theorem says. <clears throat> it says that if two angles are vertical angles, 
then the angles are congruent. So if we look at this picture here, one, two, three, and four, I want you to write down which angles can you name congruent based on the vertical angles congruence theorem. Go ahead and do that right now and then check and see if you were able to write down the same angles as I was. So here angles one and three are vertical angles so they must be congruent. So I'll mark them congruent in the picture. Angle four and two are vertical angles so they must be congruent. I gotta mark them differently. I'll do it with two little bloopies. Uh, and there we go, that's the vertical angles congruence theorem. We have to add that to our proof sheet as well. So many theorems that we're proving today. All right, so again, Two point seven if vertical angles, then angles are congruent, and that is a theorem that we just proved. All right, and then moving on here. Now we want to practice with these. We're not proving any more theorems. We're just using these theorems to practice. So go ahead and try both of these proofs on your own, and then you can check your answer with my answer as well. All right, looking here, I'm given angle one and two are congruent. I'm gonna mark that in the picture. Angle one and angle two are congruent. That is my given. Well, when I look at what else I have, let's see what else I can conclude. I see in the picture that two and three are vertical angles, so two and three must be congruent. So if three and two are congruent to each other and two and one are congruent, then three and one must also be congruent. And that's exactly what I wanted to prove. So let's see what that would look like in a proof. I know that angle two is congruent to angle three because if two angles are vertical angles, then they're congruent. And now I can use the transitive property to say that angle one is congruent to angle three. This is the transitive property of congruence. We cannot use substitution property here because there is no such thing as a substitution property of congruence. And then we're done. All right, looking down here, example five, angle one and angle two are supplements. Okay, so these two are supplementary. Angle one and four are also supplements, so we're told that. And then measure of angle two is 45 degrees. I'm gonna write that, so 45 degrees. We wanna prove that measure of angle four is 45 degrees, okay? Well, if measure of angle two is 45 degrees, measure of angle one must be 135. And then if one and four are supplementary, then this guy must be 45 degrees as well because they have to add to be 180. So okay, that makes sense. I'm understanding the proof. Now I need to write the proof. Now there's a couple different ways to do this. Regardless of how we do it, we always start with the given. So angle one and angle two are supplementary or supplements. Angle one and angle four are supplements and that is given. And we're given that the measure of angle two is equal to 45 degrees. I'm first gonna show you the shortest way to do this proof because I think it's always uh, nice to look at the most efficient way. Mathematicians like to be efficient, so let's look at the most efficient way to do this. But then I will talk about a second option. So when I look at this, if two is supplementary to one and four is supplementary to one, then because these two angles are supplementary to the same angle, these two angles must be congruent. So angle two must be congruent to angle four. So if two angles are supplementary to the same angle, then the angles are congruent. But we're talking about angle measures. So I need to convert these to angle measures. So if they're congruent, they must be equal in measure. And my reason for that is, if angles are congruent, then angles equal in measure. 
And because measure of angle 2 is equal to 45 degrees, and measure of angle 2 equals measure of angle 4, then I can substitute or use a transitive property either way. If I substitute, I substitute that in here. I'd have to say that 45 degrees equals measure of angle 4. And then from there, use a symmetric property to say measure of angle 4 equals 45 degrees, because remember, that's what we wanted to prove. So I could say substitution, property of equality, or I could say transitive property of equality. Um, both of these would work this time. And then finally, symmetric property of equality to switch it. Now I said I'd give you the most efficient way. I didn't really do that. What would be most efficient is instead of this step saying angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, I should have said angle 4 is congruent to angle 2 for the same reason. And then measure of angle 4 equals measure of angle 2. And then here when I substitute or use a transitive property, I could have been done right away. Instead I had to do one extra step. So you really could have done this in four steps. But I want to show you Another option that sometimes that students use, so you could see that how do, you could do it correctly, but it would just take longer. Um, so after step one, step two could have been, I'll say, or you could do this. Step two could have been that if they're supplementary, then the sum of the measures is 180 degrees. So you could say measure of angle one plus measure of angle two is equal to 180 degrees, and measure of angle one plus measure of angle 4 is equal to 180 degrees. So that would be if two angles are supplementary, then the sum of the angle measures is equal to 180 degrees. So then we can talk about like what we did in the picture. Well, at first I figured out what measure of angle one, uh, angle one is, and I could do that by substituting in. So measure of angle one plus 45 degrees is equal to 180 degrees. That would be my substitution property of equality. I cannot say transitive property here because I'm not substituting a whole side for another side. I'm just inserting inside in uh, one of the sides. So I just replaced. If you look at this, this measure of angle 2, 45 degrees, I put that in here to get this. So that was just substituting. It wasn't a whole side, so I couldn't use transitive property. Then I could subtract 45 from both sides or add um, negative 45 to both sides, and I would get the measure of angle 1 is equal to 135 degrees. That would be with the addition property of equality. Then I could substitute that into this equation. So I could say here that 135 degrees plus measure of angle 4 is equal to 180 degrees. And that would again be substitution property of equality. You cannot use transitive here. And then when I subtract 135 from both sides or add the opposite of 135 to both sides, then I get measure of angle 4 equals 45 degrees. So this isn't that much longer. It is longer than what could have been four steps. It was six. But it still gets the job done. And it's more uh, probably in line with how we think through these. So I wanted to show you that as well. That is the end of the 3B three notes, uh, you have the 3B3 worksheet to practice more proofs on.